Hi, I'm Jackie from IELTSJackie.com. In this video, you'll learn four key skills that you need to master to score highly in the IELTS listening test. These are prediction, recognising synonyms and paraphrasing, recognising distractors, and understanding connected speech. If you learn and practice these, you'll be well prepared for your test. We'll start with prediction. Before each recording plays, you'll have a short time to read through the question. As you do this, try to predict what the answers might be. This will focus your mind on what to listen out for in the recording. Occasionally, you'll be able to predict the actual word, but mostly it's one or more of these three things that you'll be able to determine. The type of information required, for example, a surname, a place name, a date, phone number, postcode percentage or price. The type of word required, such as a noun, an adjective or a verb. Or synonyms and paraphrasing that might be used. For example, a quarter used instead of 25% or business functions for corporate events. Any clues you can get will help you to understand the audio and identify the information needed for the answers. Here's a demonstration of how valuable this skill is. Read this sample question and try to predict the sort of words you'd need to listen out for in the recording. Pause the video and have a go at this before checking my predictions on the next slide. Here are my predictions for this question. Answer 1 will be a time. Answer 2 a place name. Answer 3 a place or street name. Answer 4 a number and answer five another time. By doing this quick activity in the short period of time you're given before the audio starts, you can get a fairly good idea as to what information you need to know. This will greatly improve your chances of identifying the correct answers. Something you can be certain of is that the spoken text will contain synonyms and paraphrasing of key words and phrases in the questions. So, don't expect to hear the same vocabulary in the recording as is written in the questions. Here's an example. The first column of this table contains the question or answer from a past paper. The second column is a transcript of the sentences in the recording that contain the answers. I've underlined the matching phrases. Number 1. The park was first built in 1979. Paraphrased as... The park itself wasn't developed until 1979. Number two. The September Celebration Day is held to remember the history of the park. Paraphrased as. The September Celebration is a special day to honour the park's development, from the tiny beginnings to the huge enterprise it is today. Number three. The Hurricane Roller Coaster is tall and made of wood. Paraphrased as. It's the highest wooden roller coaster in the country. And number four. The rides with a height limit are coded black. Paraphrased as. And black. Well, this means that you must be at least 110 centimetres tall to ride, regardless of age. Pause the video and spend a few moments comparing the language to understand how synonyms and paraphrasing have been used. If you've studied my vocabulary lessons, you'll know that I recommend writing down and learning a couple of common synonyms for every new word you learn. This will help you to quickly build up an extensive and versatile vocabulary. One of the best ways to practice recognising and using synonyms and paraphrasing is through listening to short videos or podcasts. This should already be part of your preparation for the listening test, but add in this exercise. Every so often, pause the recording after an individual sentence and think how you could paraphrase it and what synonyms you could use. Do this for a few sentences every day and you'll soon see a real improvement in your IELTS listening skills. A technique you can use in the exam to help you deal with synonyms and paraphrasing is to identify the key words or phrases in the question and quickly think of synonyms or related words that might come up in the recording. You'll only have 20 or so seconds to do this before the recording starts, 
but it could make a huge difference to how well you understand the audio and how successful you are at identifying the answers. Underline or highlight the key words as I've done in this illustration. In answer A, I've picked out media as a key word. Related words that might be used in the recording include newspaper, TV or radio. In answer B, given could be replaced by the synonym donated. For C, a common synonym of most popular is favourite. And in answer D, the word moved is a possible replacement for relocated. Even if you only have time to think of a couple of synonyms or related words, you'll find this a benefit as you listen. Another important listening skill is the ability to recognise distractors. These are words or phrases used by a speaker to qualify something or to correct themselves or another speaker. In the recording, a piece of information may be given and then corrected or changed. If you're not listening carefully, you'll think that the first piece of information is the answer, when it's the second detail that is in fact correct. Distractors are common in the listening test and are intended to try and catch you out. Here are some examples of sentences containing distractors. I really fancy a steak for my main course, but I've decided to have the fish, as I'm trying to cut down on red meat. We want to book a holiday to Spain, however, the best deals this summer are in France, so we'll go there instead. They live at number 64 Miller Street. Oh, no, sorry, it's number 46. I always get the numbers around the wrong way. The train leaves at 10.20. In fact, it's 10.21 to be precise. I've left my glasses in the living room. No, wait a minute. I remember I put them down by the phone in the hallway after I took that call. Listen for words and phrases like these and don't be tricked by them. Listen to all the details before choosing your answer. The final one of our four listening skills is something that most students struggle with to some degree or another, that is, connected speech. Connected speech is when the words and sounds in a sentence run into each other, making it difficult for a non-native speaker to understand what's being said. In these three examples, you can see the words being spoken, followed by how they might sound to the listener. Do you want to go to the park? Do you want to go to the park? His son lent him ten bucks. His son lent him ten bucks. I have to visit my grandma. I have to visit my grandma. There's no easy way to overcome the challenges of connected speech apart from listening to lots of native speakers speaking at the normal rate. Podcasts are ideal for this as you can pause them and listen to confusing sentences over and over again until you fully understand what is being said. You'd be surprised at how quickly you'll tune in to fast-paced speech with regular practice. This is an excellent exercise to do on a regular basis and will quickly improve your listening skills. You'll be able to find hundreds of topics that interest you and are relevant to the IELTS exam, so make this a daily exercise. Whilst these are the four key listening skills, I have some other skills to teach you that will save you from making unnecessary errors in the test. They're all covered in my lesson titled IELTS Listening Exercises. There's a link to it in the notes below this video. Thank you for watching and goodbye for now.